Well today we're going to be replacing the discs and the pads on the rear of the MAD 350. Now this is a non-Brembo setup so I'll take you through it, let's go! <laughs> I don't have my chocks, but I do have a couple of bricks. That catch it on the curb. Put the wheel down. Yes, we've got to take the whole caliper off. We have two 19s back here. So we're just gonna break the seals on them. And take these off. Now this will get the caliper out of the way. So obviously, we need to push the piston back, putting all the bolts in a safe place as always. Sometimes it can be a bit awkward to reach these bottom bolts. I don't know if I'm going to need a, a bar in here or wherever I can make. I'm going to need a bar. Okay, so I have gone and got two 19mm spanners. Think, why two? Why two? Because when you put this on, if you can't get enough leverage, that's what this does. You put this together. If you can't get enough leverage, you put it on, put that on there and look, it locks in and you've got an extra bar. So let's give this a go. So like I said, it's this one down here and the spanner does go on it quite nicely. And look, I didn't need the extra bar. It just undone. So that's really useful. So we should be able to get this caliper out of the way and get this disc off. Like I said, we're going to have to push this piston back because these pads are pretty damn worn. I think these are actually the original discs from the car. So all we're going to do now is lever this caliper back a little bit. Because it's locked on. Because these pads are pretty, like I said, they're pretty toast. Now I did pick up myself a nice big zip tie. Because what we're going to do, we're going to zip tie this out of the way. Okay, it's just, zip tie will just hold it, stopping hitting it anything or damaging anything. So just on the upper arm, clip the zip tie in, and there we go. Now we'll take the handbrake off. This is why we have the front wheels chopped, because obviously if you take the handbrake off, it could go either way. There we go one disc straight off. Now we do need to find a bit of rubber we just pushed in. Must have fallen down somewhere, there it is. There's a bit of rubber that fell out. All right, as you can see, these are very much toast. And we have a new set, just a set of blueprint, nothing special. Go compare. Yeah, they look right. They look the right depth. Before we clean these up, you can offer them on, get the right, get them in the right order, be quite useful. Offer them up, yep, we're happy with those. Right, so what we need to do now is clean off, I don't know if you can see, but there's like a cover grease on it. We need to clean all that up. Normally you would use a blue roll, whatever I know, so we are actually only using toilet roll. Sorry for that, but. It's what it is. So we're just using a generic brake and clutch cleaner. Just gonna wipe the whole surface down, get all of the surface grease stuff off. We don't want any of that on our braking system. Turn it over and do exactly the same for the back half. Okay, we're going to do the inside as well because this has got an inboard handbrake. We're going to clean the inside as well. And there we go. Now, it's ready to go back on the hub. So we're just going to slide her back on the hub. 
and it's pretty much ready to go now. So we're going to put the rubber back in. There's our rubber back in. That just keeps it watertight so it doesn't affect the handbrake. Now we've got this back on, I think what we might do is we might bolt this spacer back on just because then it's held in place for when we put the caliper back on. So offer it up, okay, and just put these bolts back in just to hold the disc in place. This is not something you have to do, obviously, if you're not running a um, adapter or a spacer, then obviously you can't do this, but just hold the disc on a little bit better for them. So when I'm playing around, it's not gonna give me any grief. And it's one less thing to do in about five minutes time. About five minutes, but you know what I'm saying. So what I'm gonna show you how to do this now. Okay, so what you do is you put the breaker bar in, okay, because that's gonna push down on the floor in a minute. Now we're gonna put the breaker bar on. Now you can see it's locked to the floor and it's locked in the spokes, in the spokes, in the studs. So it's not hold, hurting the studs. That's now tight. So we just need to rotate this around so we can do up the other bolts. So just rotate it around, put the bar back in, in a different, obviously, location, and then do your other bolts up. Remember when you're doing this, you need to be taking off the cap to your brake reservoir, because obviously when you're gonna push the piston back, all the fluid's gonna come up in here. Okay, so we're gonna take the caliper off now, and obviously we use this, um, so we use the zip ties, we're gonna cut the zip tie off. Good old zip ties, right. Now what we're gonna do is push this pad out of the way, as you can see, very much toast. Then we're gonna use my lovely great big G clamp. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So, obviously we're going to feed it underneath the carrier, onto the back, and then wind it in. So you can just see, all you do is Wind your G-clamp back. You know what I mean? And it pushes the piston right back. Obviously making sure you're not damaging anything on the way through. This way new pads are gonna go straight in without problem. There we go. Piston's almost all the way back. So I don't know, I've been wiggling around a lot. So you can see what I've done is I've fed underneath the carrier and just pushed it right back there. So like I said, we've got a set of Mintex pads. And we've also got some copper grease. A little bit of copper grease onto the back of the pad. Not too much. If I remember correctly, we push in this side like that and then push that in. Now push that right home to the piston. Okay, and another pad. Okay, so now we've pushed the slide pins back. We can again slide the pad in. Like I said, this is nothing, this is no special pad in the back of here. Rear brakes do about 15% of your braking. And I still, I decided to keep the non-Brembo uh, rears as well, as you notice. There we go. And push that one home too. So let's put slide pins right back. Right, so we should now be able to slide the caliper in place. We need our bolt. So our top one, and line it up. Now on for our bottom one as well. You should be able to feel the thread. You can move the caliper backwards and forwards, and you feel the thread, and you should be able to do it up a little bit. So, now we should tighten these ones back up. Back on the top. Slipped off a bit there. That's nice and tight. Right, 
making sure it's very tight. Right. Right, but that's the rear brakes back on. Quick wipe over again. So we've now completed the job, so we seem to come and check the brake fluid, which is all fine. Stick the cap back on, turn it back up, and uh, don't forget to bed your brakes in. Very, very important. Right, well that's the discs and the pads changed on the back of a 350Z with non-Brembo. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please do hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you again soon.